Hi, I'm Deanna Gillen. I'm here at the Field Service Conference with Jim Ciccone, Global Service Leader of GE Oil & Gas. Jim, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. So, can we start off talking about the evolution that's happened in the field service industry? Um, just where it's gone, even in the past 10 years. Okay. I would probably say three things have been major movers, at least, that I feel in field service. Sure. Uh, one is customer expectations. Okay. The expectations of service just continue to increase and increase. They want field engineers out there quicker than they were before. They actually want things fixed without people even touching their machines. Mm -hmm. uh, they expect high quality service for every event. And with the onset of different service providers, not only from OEMs, but also third parties, sure. competition's fairly stiff. So it requires service providers to be able to provide that level of service. And so what are you doing at GE Oil & Gas? How are you training your technicians to meet the customer's needs? Well, we do a couple things. One is the remote technology I mentioned is important. So mm -hmm. what we're trying to do is embed uh, sensors and probes things that can collect data from machines so we can be smarter to maybe uh, design it better the okay. next time or fix it remotely to not even require somebody to put hands on a machine. Okay. But when we do want to have somebody put hands on a machine, because that does happen, mm -hmm. and it's, it's going to happen, yeah. is uh, they have to be trained sure. to technically fix the machine as yeah. fast as they can, but also the other aspect of service is people. So they have to be able to have the soft skills to interact and have a human interaction, a positive human interaction experience. Okay, so what training uh, tools are you investing in? We have, uh, we, we have our own training academy okay. that we invest in. Um, it's, uh, it's based overseas okay. and it provides uh, not only theoretical technical training but also hands-on with machines. So we actually oh. have physically machines in the training academy. So we'll go through the classroom and then they'll actually do hands-on work. Oh, that's fantastic. That's one thing we do. And then the second thing is you can't get the best training just from a, from a classroom environment sure. that maybe might be a week or two. Mm -hmm. We buddy people up with other senior techs in the field okay. so they can, it's OJT, on the job training, uh -huh. so they can see it in action with, with uh, the customer. Okay. Um, are there any technologies that you also use to train? Um, I don't know, for instance, like a training video for a tech that may not, uh, may be remote in the field and mm -hmm. trying to fix something that they don't aren't specialized in? Well, we, we don't really have anything in terms of video that brings the experience from the field to, to, to somebody else. But okay. what we do do is we do have online training modules as well, mm -hmm. which are you know demand-based. So sure. when a field service engineer has some time and they want to get caught up on something, they can go online through a library of large catalog of opportunities, not only technical, but also non-technical soft skills okay. that they can do uh, whenever they want. Okay, and um, you were talking about just customers wanting everything super, super fast. So if you're looking from a technology standpoint, what technologies are you investing in at GE Oil & Gas to enable the people in the field to get everything back to <clears throat> GE? in real time. In a quick manner. Yeah. So uh, really scheduling software. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, assignment, sort of assignment. How do I choose the right field service engineer based on skill set and availability? Sure. So that scheduling is a combination of a career competency mm -hmm. and also availability. Sure. Uh, that's one technology. Another technology is um, project management software. Okay. So for all of our projects that we have, we develop Gantt charts load them up with resources and costs to properly manage, you know, because any, any project, a successful project has quality concerns, right? You've got to meet quality expectations, you've got to be within budget, and you've got to do it on time. And so that Primavera Gantt chart helps us to manage, manage that. Okay. Um, I know that you're going to be speaking at the Field Service Conference tomorrow or Thursday? On Thursday. On Thursday. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your presentation? Yeah. Yeah, it might have a tricky title, right? So I titled yeah. it the NPS of Field Service Sales. So it's not Net Promoter Score. No, no, uh, it's not. No. <laughs> what it is is uh, what I'm going to talk about is the importance. You asked me at the beginning, yeah. what are things that are driving change and some of the changes that happen in the field service industry. Sure. Yeah. I mentioned customer requirements are high. The, the other two were um, data requirements, 
getting information from machines, and then use of technology mm -hmm. to help. Those are the three things. Sure. And uh, you know, we all do this for one reason, right? Businesses are around for money. Yep. And you have to make money, and you have to be profitable in what you do. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to discuss the, the source of revenue that you can get from using your field service engineers in revenue generating activities. Okay. So NEP, or NPS stands for uh, Needs, Perils, and Solutions. Sure. I'm going to kind of give some practical examples from experience I've had on why it's important to have mm -hmm. field service techs help to generate revenue. Mm -hmm. Some of the perils, things not to do, lessons learned, mistakes yeah. I've made that maybe others can benefit from. Mm -hmm. And then I'll give a, an approach, a potential solution that others may be able to use uh, if they want to develop some sort of program. Could you possibly give us um sneak peek of one of your examples that you might be giving? Okay, you, uh, an example. Yes. So you mean uh, an example that went good or bad? Either or. Okay. Um, yeah, so I can give you an example of um, we went in to a customer and we were trying to sell some equipment product. Okay. And um, I was invited in from a field service perspective to help uh, with, with this process after the process had already started. Okay. So the sales folks, the product sales folks had been doing it for some time. We walked out of the room and, and you know, I was mostly an observer and a listener since I was trying to get my setting on what was happening and what mm -hmm. has happened mm -hmm. to find out that we actually were not a low cost provider okay. and we were most likely going to lose the deal because of the initial price of the product. Okay. So the discussion I had with the product sales manager was we're going to try to tack on a service contract to this equipment, right? Yeah. And uh, they need a service contract for this type of equipment because they don't have the capabilities themselves. Mm -hmm. And we're the OEM of it, so yeah. likely they could use us. Okay. So I kind of talked about how, you know, an annuity stream of revenue for the company over a five-year period and the margins you can get out of service yeah. were well worth dropping the initial product sales price sure. to get that annuity stream. Mm -hmm. And um, together we worked through a... a scenario and came back and we ended up getting the deal mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the long run. So it was beneficial for the customer and it was beneficial for us, but if service was not engaged in that process yeah. and we were working only on the, the product margins, mm -hmm. then we probably would have lost that install base and sure. also that revenue that would have come afterwards. Do you think there's any dangers associated with the evolution that's coming about in field service, the evolution? of a technician becoming a salesman, mm -hmm. trying to do both? Yeah, absolutely. There, there's, um, it's a double-edged sword. Yeah. You, you, you can't expect a field service tech to be a salesperson. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I'm going to mention tomorrow is, or Thursday, is I don't recommend a field service tech being a salesperson. I recommend they be a lead generator. Okay. They be somebody, they keep their eyes open, they listen to what's going on, they check out the environment to see what's happening. Sure. They understand the equipment, they talk to an operator, and then they take that information with the combination of the product knowledge they know to a salesperson to say, this is what this customer needs. Okay. Right? And maybe they help from the uh, groundswell from the bottom up in building that value, because if you can get the maintenance supervisor or the operator to buy into that, uh -huh. it's a whole lot easier whenever they champion your idea up to sure. the C-suite when the salesperson is sitting down in a room trying to negotiate a deal. So I'm, they shouldn't be a salesperson for sure. Their primary objective is to provide field service mm -hmm. and be technical, but they can help for sure. Okay. Um, and then if you could pinpoint maybe a single best practice that you would um, advocate for everybody in the audience to take back to their own companies, what do you think that would be? Well, I think the single best practice, there's a lot of ways to do it. So there's, there's not one single way to make this happen, right? Mm -hmm. there, there are many different ways. But I would say that single best practice would be buy-in from the organization. Okay. Okay. You can, as a field service organization, do it on your own. You have to have buy-in from the sales team mm -hmm. that the, the service techs are going to help with revenue. You have to have buy-in from the service managers and service management. Mm -hmm. You have to have buy-in from the CFO. You need to have buy-in from everybody in the organization because if you don't, yeah. then it's not going to be championed and supported and it'll end up failing as a program. Okay. Well, Jim, thank you so much for meeting with us and for coming to the Field Service Conference. We've really enjoyed having you and look forward to seeing your presentation on Thursday. Thank you, Deanna. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. Thank you.